so now we have discussed different types of policies related to pakistan like gender policy family policy crime policy health and education now we discuss the impact of globalization on social policy literature and practice everywhere not focused on pakistan so what is globalization globalization is the more and more emphasis on travel and other things globalization means that uh, more interactions more travel more data movement more capital movement all these things are part of the globalization for centuries local was everything so localities defined people so there was a distinct culture of every locality there was a distinct language spoken there uh, there was distinct tribe or social structure uh, and foreigner meant any person who uh, who was from another village or uh, from another town uh, most of the people don't left their town or their area all their lives so that was the situation in around 11 12th or centuries before the globalization started after the age of discovery so age of discovery was from 15 to 18th century during this age european explorers discovered america as cir- and circumnavigated the globe so there was a scientific revolution copernicus newton and other um, scientists uh, they they came up with new scientific discoveries then there was this as a result of this age of discovery and uh, movement of europeans outside their homes we have colonization exploitation of the people and as well as slavery global trade of course increased because of this but the it the problem with this global trade was that it was only with their own colonies so europeans were trading globally but with only with their own colonies so french were trading with french colonies and british were trading with british colonies after the age of t- discovery we have four waves of globalization so globalization 1 from 19th century to 1914 globalization 2 from 45 to 89 globalization 3 from 89 to 2008 and then the globalization 4 the first wave of globalization from 19th century to 1914 uh was dominated by the british empire it was said that sun never never set on the british empire because uh the british possessions were uh were dispersed around the globe so whenever how, uh, the sun set in one area it was actually coming out from another area so the inventions which are related to this um wave were a uh, steam engine and industrial weaving machine so this led to uh, factories making large number of products and then there were steam ships to transport them all around the world and there was this colonies available to to buy those things which were produced by england and other uh, european countries and then of course there was this uh, invention of stock exchange and then there were international companies and people have the opportunity to buy or invest in these countries in these companies the second wave started from 1945 to 1989 between 1914 and 1945 there were two world wars and depression so these three events actually uh, decrease the global trade and as um, more and more trade was linked to military rather than um, other commercial activity and then of course great, great depression led, led to a trade wars and the increasing of tariff in almost all countries all major countries After 1945 the global trade again started its ascent. So uh, the new hegemon which is the US uh, led the world using new technologies such, such as automobiles and airplanes. Soviet Union also helped the great, uh, global trade in its own sphere um, uh, trading with uh, even bilateral uh, uh, trading with uh, other communist countries. uh the, there was world peace during this time local wars continued but overall there was peace so that uh, helped the increase in global trade 
and it increased to 14% of the world GDP. There was also the rise of China. The third wave of globalization started in 1990 when the European Union collapsed and the Orange curtain, uh, curtain also uh, went down. Uh, and then there was nothing to stop uh, the neoliberal uh, ideas to be pro uh, to be promoted and to be accepted all over the world. So communism was out. So globalization became the all conquering force. Um, uh, China also changed itself and uh, didn't remain a communist country. It communist remained a communist com country only in name. Otherwise, it became part of the capitalist world. There <coughs> was also World Trade Organization, which was created uh, in the late 90s. And it also helped to increase the global trade. And the major economies like India, Brazil, China all slashed trades, uh, slashed their tariffs to help the global trade. Computers, internet, and mobile communication were the technologies which helped increase uh, the movement of capital, the movement of goods, and the movement of people. Uh, global export rose from 14% of uh, the world GDP in the, in the last wave to quarter that is 25% of uh, world GDP and the global trade uh, became half of the world GDP that is 50% and there was the integration of uh, supply chains like never before so if you are making a car a part of it may be uh, built in India another one in China the engine may be coming from France the headlights may be coming from US uh, and the actual the car will be assembled in Mexico. So that is how the global ch supply chains worked. The fourth wave of uh, global, we are currently in the fourth wave of globalization, which started after 2010. Uh, during the last few years before this 2010, there was this global recession and it decreased uh, the global trade of our time being, but now the global trade is now in full swing. This era of globalization or wave of globalization is dominated by US and China and the technologies that are leading uh, this uh, march of global trade are e-commerce, digital services and artificial intelligence.